So the recording is in progress now. Um, I'd like to welcome to the Aurora um, Philosophy Institute, uh, Dave Barrows, who is the uh, Capital Region Director in Ottawa of the Aurora Philosophy Institute and a retired business person, public servant, uh, you know, and uh, educator and, you know, my former colleague for, for many years at the Schubert School of Business. He needs no introduction uh, to all of us. Um, Dave is going to speak this evening about the new thought movement, which I didn't know existed, and Dave will explain what it is. And we will also discover that the new thought movement is something like 150 years old. But that's par for the course with these things. David. Well, thank you, John. Uh, let's get the technology uh, underway here and see what we can do. Share. Okay, everybody can see that? We're okay? Excellent. I can see well, it. Good stuff. Well, the New Thought uh, movement really um, started, as John said, about 150 years ago. But as we'll see, New Thought has been with us uh, forever since the beginning of time. It just got the nomenclature uh, relatively recently. So what's New Thought all about? Okay, what's New Thought all about? Why won't I? Uh... Oh, okay. Well, now we have something that's Photoshopped. But actually, it really isn't Photoshopped. This is the legendary Iceman, Wim Hof, and he does this all the time. Seems far-fetched. Who says so? Well, uh, the Smithsonian Institute says so. Uh, he's climbed Mount Everest, Mount Kilimanjaro, wearing shorts. Guinness World Record for the longest swim under ice. He's run a half marathon through the Namibia Desert without drinking any water. There's an academic literature, Journal of Neural Imaging, uh, 6.556 impact factor for those of you who are academically bound and he can use his mind, it would appear, to induce a stress response uh, that helps him resist cold and other things. So he activates an in, uh, internal painkiller by conducting breathing exercises. He seems to have found a way to hack into his physiological system. And of course, they did a, uh, a test with uh, control subjects, etc. So uh, this is all documented, and if you're interested, uh, which I hope you are, you'll take a look at Vim on uh, his many YouTube channels. So what's New Thought all about? Well, basically, Andrew Carnegie says, controlled attention, which magnetizes the brain with the nature of one's dominating thoughts, aims, and purposes, causing one to be always in search of every necessary thing that's related to one's dominating thoughts. Carnegie would know about this because he came to America when he was 12 years old from Scotland and ended up being the uh, richest man in America for a little while, an interesting character. Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. There are, of course, uh, religious folks, the uh, beloved Meister Eckhart, Suddenly, you know, it's time to start something new and trust the magic of beginnings. When the soul wants to experience something, she throws out an image and steps into it. I am what I wanted, and I want what I am. A little science here. The more I learn of physics, the more I'm drawn to metaphysics. Everything is energy. That's all there is to it. Much of the frequency of reality you want you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. It's not philosophy, it's physics. And that's Albert Einstein, who you would all agree is a physicist. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we want to look at new thought in three tranches, and we have um, uh, overlapping sets. New thought mainstream, which is mystical. New age, which is occult and philosophy. There actually is some philosophy here. Now, um, 
these I have sorted out in my own way. So those of you who are in the literature, uh, this may seem a trifle arbitrary, but it helps me to get my thoughts in order, such, such as they are. So what's new thought mysticism? Well, we all know mysticism, don't we? An attempt to improve, to prove the incredible by an appeal to the unintelligible. H.L. Mencken, and Mencken was a, a nasty little piece of business. He was politically incorrect before there was such a thing as political incorrectness. Horse walks into a bar. Why the long face? The horse says, I just realized I'm a metaphysical concept within a fictional narrative and will cease to exist at the end of this sentence. The great Robin Williams, comedian and philosopher, if it's the psychic network, network, why do they need a phone number? Seems reasonable. But of course, reality uh, has its own uh, issues and concerns. Uh, Robin Williams, again, the title of his 25th album was Reality, What a Concept. And there's Robin, What Year Is It? And those of you who know anything about Robin Williams know that he had great deal of difficulty relating to what we might call reality. So what's new thought? It began with uh, the mesmerism of Quimby in 1840s uh, from the transcendental group of Emerson, Concord group. Uh, mesmerism is not hypnotism. Mesmerism is the messing around with bodily fluids. Uh, that's just pure quackery. Um, hypnosis is something else. Thoughts become matter. It was a metropolitan and basically is a metropolitan religion. Like Puritanism, it recognizes the law of prosperity as a cardinal statute, and you can trace it from Luther to Calvin uh, to Weber, affirm the economic potency of character. The writings of New Thought accord with traditional American philosophy of success. Much of the New Thought mass literature, it focuses on directions for making money. Now, as we know from previous discussions with our friends, um, coming to America was great and exciting for many people, North America, if you will, um, but there were already people in uh, the Western Hemisphere. The people in the Western Hemisphere crossed over the Bering Straits uh, from Siberia and then migrated into the Western Hemisphere the genetic material became amplified uh, because they were isolated from other Asian populations. So it's important to understand from the uh, purposes that there were people already here. Um, they were themselves migrants, of course, uh, but they didn't invite the Europeans. The Europeans didn't treat them always the best and certainly didn't treat uh, the Africans who were brought over in bondage. Actually, the Asians may be the second to come. We now know that the uh, Vikings hit Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, and according to uh, new findings uh, out of New Mexico from a couple of weeks ago, uh, human footprints dating between 21,000 and 23,000 years old. So. We must understand uh, there were a lot of people uh, who were impacted, uh, but we're focusing now primarily on the Europeans uh, who came to uh, the Western Hemisphere in search of a new life and new opportunities. Now, New Thought's brand of idealism is that the ultimate basis of existence is mental, God, energy as mind, Material and physical conditions are secondary to and the product of human states and conditions. Consciousness, ideas, thoughts, um, uh, and the causal factors are uh, behind this phenomena from objects, human bodies, events, and circumstances. So this is pure uh, mysticism as we understand it. Now, is there some science behind this? Well, as we all know, um, mass and energy are the same thing. And we know that um, 
with the law of conservation of energy, it cannot be destroyed. Energy is there forever. Everything is energy. That's all there is to it. Match the frequency. You cannot help but get that reality. This is physics. Again, that's our friend, Albert Einstein. Whether it's true or not is, of course, quite another story, but there we, uh, there we are. Now, importantly, a deity is not necessarily required in new thought. Um, a, a large component of new thought is theistic. For example, the Protestant ethic, uh, which has been well documented. But an equally significant component does not require a deity to enter the physical universe and perform miracles. There's not a big guy on a throne up there uh, screaming out orders for 8 billion people down here, let alone the rest of the uh, known universe. So the universe is composed of uh, energy, which can be accessed by means of new thought processes. The individual, therefore, is the creator. Now, as you can imagine, uh, this has uh, caused uh, some difficulty, uh, particularly uh, within Christian and other faiths, uh, because it appears to place human uh, beings before God. Everything comes from God. And this says, no, not, uh, not really, not necessarily. What are the characteristics? Well, it's world affirming, harmonial, human spirit evolution, physical, emotional, material prosperity, and uh, personal relationships are impacted by this. It's not corporate. In other words, um, you, you don't get uh, corporate religions with, um, with all the paraphernalia associated with synagogues and churches and mosques. The mass market commercial uh, new thought never really articulated its cosmology in any formal philosophical context. So um, what you see is what you get. And it had restricted academic horizons, lax uh, systematic theology. So that's the mass market um, commercial aspect of new thought. As we'll see later on, there is a philosophical aspect uh, which has been articulated in somewhat great detail. Now, New Thought uh, embraces change, embraces uh, cultural uh, change. It's supportive of uh, pluralism, individualism, uh, et cetera, globalization. Uh, quite important here is the role of women in New Thought. Uh, and uh, this is interesting because women had a voice at the very beginning, in the middle uh, of the 1800s into the early 1900s. Now you can say, well, they should have. Of course, they should have, but they didn't have. I mean, there was no uh, right to vote. But women would organize meetings, they would speak, they wrote books, and they had a, a serious uh, position of power, if that's the right word, in New Thought. It was apolitical. New Thought tends not to take political positions uh, and seldom advocates public positions. It's all pretty much internal. Now, well, what happens if New Thought doesn't work? Well, if you don't acknowledge hardship, you can have some serious mental health issues. People reminding you how good it is uh, doesn't make sadness, fear, or anxiety go away necessarily. Research shows that suppressing negative emotions can make you feel worse. And the real nub of this is new thought is supposed to work for everybody, every time, every place, everywhere. And if it doesn't work, it's your fault. Uh, this has particular implications with uh, uh, Christian scientists uh, and their, um, uh, not refusal, but their lack of utilization of um, formal medical services. Now, Viktor Frankl, uh, who was one of the four P guys, uh, you see this a lot in New Thought. Uh, they start out as uh, physicians. They get into 
psychology, psychiatry, and then philosophy. Uh, Frankel was not considered a major philosopher. Uh, coined the term tragic optimism. So there's hope and meaning to be found in life while acknowledging the existence of loss, pain, and suffering. Frankel knew all about that because he walked out of Auschwitz, which is more than most people can say. Uh, and of course, he lost everybody and they were annihilated. So tragic optimism means there's space to experience the good and the bad, and we can grow from each. Now, if you look at it, you might say, that's one of the world's great oxymorons, tragic optimism, right up there with military intelligence and economic forecasting. Now, this raises the question of what is wealth. If you look at the popular literature, it's all about commercialization. It's all about uh, and the, and Napoleon Hill's uh, 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 book, Think and Grow Rich talks about it. You know, just if you think about it, you're going to go rich. Uh, Hill was accused of fraud. Uh, he ended up with a very significant net worth. So at least it worked for him. You know, it worked for anybody who read the book. But if you read New Thought, it's uh, meant to be holistic in terms of health of mind, body, and spirit, in addition to financial wealth. You know, I'm wealthy if you're sick and have poor relationships. Now we'll return to Andrew Carnegie, uh, who again founded US Steel in Pittsburgh. Um, and he did that just coming over from Scotland at age 12. He disapproved of charity. Now this is interesting because it sounds like it comes right out of the, um, uh, the left wing of uh, the United States. He praised the high British taxes on the estates of dead millionaires, remarking that by taxing estates heavily at death, the state marks its condemnation of the selfish millionaire's unworthy life. It is desirable that nations should go much further in this direction. So you don't get many billionaires, because that's what he was, of course, uh, in today's money, um, talking about high taxes and what a good deal high taxes are. Uh, he was one of the first 90% guys uh, that I've seen. Uh, he gave away about 90% of his uh, fortune. And he founded things um, that uh, would last. So he didn't give to charity. He, he started the Carnegie Library, and he was really into local libraries. He spent a lot of money on local libraries. Carnegie Institute uh, of Science and Carnegie Mellon University in the United States, which is now ranked 27th best uh, institution in the uh, United States of America. So he's an interesting chap. He made a lot of money and then he decided to um, invest it, if you will. And his investment is still working 100 years later, more than 100. Now we're going to move on to the next uh, component of this, which is new age account. Now the new age um, actually and interestingly uh, had a um, academic start to it. And that's Maslow's theory of human motivation published in 1943 in the psychological review. Again, for those of you who care about such things, an 8.934 impact factor. And Maslow said, look, we start physiologically, breathing, food, water. Then we're interested in security, family, health. Then we're interested in friendship. Then we're interested in esteem. And finally, we're interested in self-actualization. And he said, that's the hierarchy. Now, of course, the academics have slaughtered this uh, over the next, uh, whatever it is, 80 years. Um, but the, the, the concept remains the same, uh, that uh, uh, there's a hierarchy of uh, human motiv motivation and self-actualization. This led to what was called the uh, human potential movement. Uh, individuals cultivating their potential will bring about social change 
and Maslow used the term meta-motivation. People who go beyond the scope of their basic needs and strive for constant betterment. Now we run into an interesting character here, uh, and that's Carl Jung. Jung was also one of the four P guys, uh, physician, psychology, philosophy, um, uh, psychiatry. And he was a, a contemporary of uh, Freud. They got along famously until they didn't. Um, Freud, of course, was all about uh, the individual subconscious. So um, Jung had to do him one better and talked about the collective unconscious uh, with universal symbols. Now, in fairness, uh, Jung acknowledged that he got most of this from the East, uh, that that's where all this stuff really came from. So the psychotherapeutic practice revolves around examining the patient's relationship to the collective unconscious. And as I say, Jung was a big deal. He took himself very seriously. He came from a very uh, well-known family in Switzerland. He married into one of the watch companies, IWG, I think it was. So he had lots and lots of money. Um, but of course, once people started to look at it, they said, look, uh, it's unscientific. How can you manage that? How, what is this? What does the shadow mean? What is the tower? Uh, but in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, the seventh coldest capital city in the world, um, you can go to a Jungian psychotherapist. As you can for Frankel. Frankel also has psychotherapists in Ottawa practicing. What they do and how they treat you with the wise man and the tree of life, I have no idea, but they're there if you want them, prepared to pay for them. Now, from this new age developed in the 1960s, uh, it was uh, spiritualism, uh, uh, Asian, and had its roots in more than simply new thought. New age and new thought are not the same thing, in other words. They, they both look at crystal transformation, but they're significantly different. New Age is occult, okay? New Age is channeling, astrology, tarot cards, crystals, etc. And New Thought is more mystical, more mystical in the tradition. Literally, some take it all the way back to Plato and the allegory of the caves and that sort of stuff. So they're not the same, but they're related. So the New Age was associated with the counterculture of the 1960s. As far as the literature is concerned, there's no such thing as New Age anymore. That's gone, replaced by mind, body, and spirit. It's holistic, using uh, terms like ocean of oneness, universal principles, etc. Divinity, then, uh, is mind, consciousness, and as a form of energy, you tap into the energy. It's like a live wire. And that's the same for both new age and new thought. Energy's out there, you just have to tap into it, get hold of it, give you a jolt, and off you go. So new age views the material universe as a meaningful illusion. In other words, there it is, uh, you should uh, use it constructively instead of trying to escape into other realms. What are the New Age therapies? Well, they're the usual razzmatazz, um, spiritual, uh, uh, physical, mental aspects of healing, critiques uh, mainstream Western medicine with its focus on disease, the 15 minutes that you get with the doctor nowadays, where it's all, okay, what is it? And here's a pill, off you go. Uh, it has an affinity with traditional forms of medicine and rejects Christianity with its emphasis on sin and guilt, which they think just generates fear and hinders spiritual evolution. 
Now, um, I don't know if uh, our colleagues here who take uh, these uh, things uh, 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 very personally, but of course, there is the question of cultural appropriation. Plastic shamans, astroturf sun dancers, in the American Indian Quarterly, the summer of 2000, no impact factor, I'm afraid. So it's cultural imperialism, misappropriating sacred ceremonies. So not everybody is happy with new age and using uh, their symbolism uh, for their own purposes. The account, as we all know, is pretty straightforward. Uh, parapsychology, extrasensory perception, telepathy, precognition, clairvoyance, magic, telekinesis, near-death experiences, apparitional experiences, all of these things constitute the occult, which of course in itself is, a, is an evening session. Unfortunately for the occult, there is absolutely no scientific evidence ever of occult anyplace in the whole history of person kind. Duke University, which calls itself the Harvard of the South, ended its parapsychological research many, many years ago. The CIA, the American CIA, bless their souls, um, did research into behavioral engineering. Stargate project, which was terminated in 1995, there was no useful uh, intelligence operation. Stanford, again, one of the great American universities, studied uh, extrasensory perception and telekinesis in a lab setting. And after 10,000 experiments concluded statistically that the data failed to reveal any cause beyond chance. There is no scientific evidence for the occult. Well, you cannot prove it. So why is it still around? Why do people still talk and yell and scream about the occult. I was playing with my daughter uh, one day, many, many, many years ago now in our backyard. And all of a sudden I spoke out, Michael, watch out. Michael, watch out. That seems somewhat unusual. I have a brother named Michael, uh, three years younger than I am who was living in Boston, Massachusetts at the time, and I was living in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It just came out. Michael, watch out. I didn't know what to do about it. Should I call him and tell him to watch out? Watch out for what? I have no idea. Well, sure enough, a couple of weeks later, he had a massive MS attack, multiple sclerosis, which has confined him to a wheelchair for the next 40 years. He's still alive. Now, why did it happen? How did it happen? There's no scientific evidence. Could I reproduce it? If I could, I would tell you what stocks to buy tomorrow. I can't. Um, no scientific proof, but you know, these things continue to happen to many, many people. Uh, and so the occult continues to exist in one form or another. Now, this is the API in the Aurora Public Library. So the question is, is there any philosophy here? Where's the philosophy here? Well, there actually is philosophy here somehow. And the philosophy finds itself in William James. Who was William James? Uh, he was a 4P guy, physician, uh, psychology, psychiatry, and philosophy. And he offered the first psychology course in the United States at Harvard. When they say somebody wrote the book, in this case, William James wrote the book. He wrote the first book, textbook in psychology. He established the first psychology lab in 1875 at Harvard. One of the most influential philosophers of the United States, father of American psychology. Now, on what basis can I say that? Well, I say that because that's what Wikipedia says. 
And as we all know, if Wikipedia says it, it must be true. Most people now get their PhDs from Wikipedia. But he was also, interestingly, a founding member of the American Society for Psychical Research into thought transfers, mediums, seances, telepathy. In other words, James was heavily into the occult. How do we know this? His specialty was haunted houses. Now there's a guy named Eric Larson who writes interesting books, I guess. He has a new audio book, No One Goes Alone, an historical novella that follows the gold hunting exploits of the 19th century psychologist and philosopher, William James. I don't much like audio books and it hasn't had a great review, but nonetheless, um, James is a well-known uh, person of the occult, as well as the founder of modern psychology, at least in the United States of America. Well, what's mysticism? Uh, an experience which supplies knowledge of the uh, transcendental, it's spontaneous. It could be religious practices such as meditation, natural repetition, psychedelic drugs, or epilepsy. Some people think that people who have epilepsy are blessed because they have visions. I'm not so sure of that. Well, what about psychedelic drugs? How do we know? Well, James inhaled nitrous oxide. And that's a fact, Jack. The Journal of Anesthesia documented this. Journal has an impact factor of 6.039. So James was not into drugs, LSD, or those kinds of things. Uh, I guess they didn't really exist. Morphine just kind of you know, makes it numb. But it would appear that nitrous oxide gave him visions. Nitrous oxide gave him visions. Uh, and so he was into mysticism, but he was also into the occult, and he was not afraid to use mind-expanding uh, activities, such as nitrous oxide. Now, interestingly, um, the term new thought, which everybody thinks is commercial, actually was um, first used by William James in the varieties of religious experience, which is not an easy read. So it's not something you just take off the bookshelf. Um, and he says, uh, with regard to the mind cure movement, Greatest discovery of my generation, human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. And of course, that's the basis, isn't it, for psychiatry and psychology. He did ignore Quimby. Quimby is not, you know, in his social circle. Uh, James um, uh, came from a very well-to-do family. Um, they spent half the time in Europe, half the time in America. Uh, his brother was William James, one of the great uh, novelists of all times. So where did it come from? Well, the Gospels, Emersonian, uh, New Deal uh, Transcendentalism, Berkeleyan Idealism, Spiritualism, Optimistic Evolution. So he was around the time of Darwin, and he was into evolution big time. And of course, the Orient, the East, cannot be far behind. Uh, much of this stuff, of course, for, comes from uh, uh, Hindu. So Ralph Waldo Emerson was his godfather. Uh, transcendentalism was higher consciousness within the individual personality in the biological evolution of the species. Uh, he studied, of course, consciousness with experimental psychology, cognitive psychology of consciousness. He talks about the plurality of states and that waking consciousness is one state of many. It's significant because if you're not awake, you'll probably walk out into traffic. So it's necessary for the survival of the human organism. 
The subconscious then is a doorway for mystical experiences to occur, transcendent, passive, but when they come, personality is permanently altered. You have a, an epiphany, as they, uh, as they might say. So James was different. He was American, and he rejected the European uh, notion of uh, Enlightenment uh, ideals. Uh, he was into positivism. He uh, emphasized physical phenomena, empirical evidence, scientific method, which is a bit incongruous because he also believed in haunted houses. So somehow he was a world-class scientist and he believed in haunted houses. Uh, he liked Darwin um, and uh, it is argued that he served as a mediator between scientific agnosticism, religious view of the world. The value of religion, emphasis on mysticism, and revelation as opposed to theology and doctrine. So it's, you find it out for yourself, somebody on a pulpit isn't going to tell you, and the university is pluralistic. It changes by uh, experiences. The pragmatic method is a, a typical American phenomenon. Um, truths are revisable with new experiences. Uh, as we've discussed previously, relativistic theories generate criticism amongst other philosophers who say, no, 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 there's, there's just one way. A defense of religious faith in the absence of conclusive evidence defines religion as the experience of the divine. But interestingly, he doesn't require a monolithic God nor does he require a religious community. Life could be worth living if we believe that it is, act on that belief. Happiness requires ideals, striving to achieve them and believe we are making some progress. We okay so far? Well, yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. What's it all about then? What, what can we possibly conclude from all of this stuff? Well, first of all, as uh, Buddy Wim Hof uh, suggests, um, you can do this. He teaches classes. Uh, people, um, you know, go to his seminars and workshops. Um, he's been on TED conferences, uh, if you know what those things are. Uh, he's been written up uh, in the literature, academic literature. And so this exists. This is not, um, this is not Photoshop stuff. But of course, for those of you who have been around, this has been going on for a long time. So when I said uh, New Thought, you know, uh, has just been articulated in this fashion since the 1840s. But of course, people have been practicing New Thought uh, since the beginning of uh, time, uh, sitting on a, uh, what appeared to be a bed of nails. Now, New Thought uh, finds its way into medicine. When pain lasts, brain activity switches from pain circuit to circuits that process emotions. Emotions like anxiety can take central stage in chronic pain. Mindfulness practices reduce the person's pain experience. That's Harvard Medical School. This is taught in medical school. Okay, this is taught in medical school. Sports psychology, psycho uh, neuromuscular theory ad, uh, says that athletes activate their muscles by visualizing the action. And in fact, if you test them, you put them on machinery, all the neurons fire as if they were actually running the race. They could be sitting there and all the uh, evidence would suggest that their muscles and their movements uh, that they're actually running the race. And so people visualize, those of you who follow sports, uh, when they talk about uh, why did you win that fight? And they'll say, well, I visualized the outcome. I 
Charlotte all the way through. And then, of course, we have cognitive behavioral therapy, which is an accepted inter intervention and consistent with and based, in fact, on, in part at least, on new thought. CBT is common talk therapy and is AMA approved. You'd be hard pressed to find a more conservative body than the American Medical Association. And it approves of this activity where you become aware of inaccurate or negative thinking and view challenging situations more clearly and you respond effectively. They say that many of these disorders can be, if not cured, at least fixed with CBT. Uh, I have, of course, um, used CBT in the past, uh, but that's actually helped me out. It's another story. In some cases, CBT is uh, most effective when combined with other psychiatric interventions, such as antidepressants or other medications. As you know, psychotherapists cannot prescribe drugs. Those can only be prescribed by a doctor, and that's normally a uh, psychiatrist, and psychiatrists work with um, cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, because as I understand psychiatry now, it's mainly drugs oriented. And then if you need to talk to anybody, you talk to a behavioral therapist. So what's the, as we would say in the great Schulich School of Business, what's the bottom line? What's the bottom line in all of this? Does it work? Does it, does it work? Well, absolutely. In medical applications, new thought works. Psychiatry, cognitive behavioral therapy, focused attention resulting in action, as we heard from Carnegie. It works for some people, some of the time. Doesn't work for everybody all of the time. Some people, some of the time. No, mass market, popular literature, commercial new thought without undertaking any serious action does not work. You cannot think and grow rich. If you try to do that, you should just buy a lottery ticket and be done with it. So the mass market literature uh, really uh, doesn't work unless you undertake serious action. You can't just think and grow rich. New Age Occult, does it work? No, there is no scientific proof that it works. Nonetheless, many of us have experienced this phenomenon, which has no explanation, if you were to go to a scientist and say, uh, why did I say that about my brother, Michael? She would say, I don't know, coincidence, I suppose. What about philosophy? Well, let's try a syllogism. Great philosophers have great ideas. I think we can all agree to that. William James, is a great philosopher. How do we know that? Wikipedia says so. And if you go to any ranking of the great philosophers of the world, William James always shows up. If you focus only on Europe and the Western Hemisphere, William James ranks relatively highly. If you add in the East, Confucius, Buddha, et cetera, et cetera. William James falls down the list, but he's still there. So great philosophers have great ideas. William James is a great philosopher. William James has a great idea or ideas. So there is no thought, uh, no question that new thought is a great idea. Absolutely. Now, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, of course, is, is quite a, another story. So that's a tour through uh, New Thought. Uh, I hope that you uh, find it interesting. 
or found it interesting. Um, I would uh, look forward uh, to the discussion. I don't have much more to say, probably better to hear from you people than to um, ask me any questions. But if you do, I'll be try to answer them as best I can. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and um, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to be associated with you this evening. Yeah, so thank you very much, Dave. I'm going to stop recording uh, now.